Today's video is going to be very simple. I'm going to be trying to make some progress towards 2100 ELO Blitz on chess.com. And you guys can come along for the ride. I'll be playing one or two games and then analyzing them afterwards. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's see what we can make happen. All right, we have the black pieces against Darth Vader 1965, who's playing 1d4. I'm going to go for my staple, 1c6, and we go into a Slav. He may, the exchange has been quite popular uh, recently, but we'll see what he does. Okay, I'm going to go for a semi-Slav and block my bishop in, just because I quite like that style. It's very pa- eh, You can claim that it's passive, but I personally quite like it. We're just going to get castled quickly. We have a solid center. I'm going to go h6 first. And then I think I'm going to take. Yeah, I'm going to take on c4. So that the bishop wasted a tempo going to d3. And then we're going to go with b5. Kick the bishop. I think b4, c5 might be a good idea. Uh, no, but if b4, knight a4. Um, we can start with a6. Yeah, let's just go a6 to prepare the move c5. Um, do we want to go knight d7 first? d5 takes takes. Uh, no. Let's prepare with knight bd7. So that if we go c5 takes takes, I want to take with the knight. Uh, okay. c5. He can't take it. Takes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go c5. Oh, I... Ah, knight c6. Yeah, I, I just missed that. I should have gone bishop to b7, but okay. I don't think it's the end of the world. Of course, we need to keep our eye on the bishop. Ah, that's a really nice move. A really nice move. Fair play. The issue is, takes comes with check, and then he picks the rook up. And the bishop on b7 would be undefended. Uh, c4. Takes, takes, takes. Mm. This might just be lost. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm going to defend the rook with my knight. But c5 is a problem now. Ah, bishop b7. I should have just played bishop b7. c5 was too early. But we'll see if my opponent can capitalize on it. It's not good. It's really not good. It's falling apart, to be honest. I don't think we really have any... Like, the knight's under attack, the pawn's under attack. But I don't think it's enough. Can't take with the knight. We have to take with the pawn. I couldn't take this because of this. If he takes with the bishop, if he takes with the bishop, then can I do this? Wait, yeah, can I do that? Because this, oh, the rook hangs. Missed that. The queen is a little bit stuck, though. Queen doesn't have many squares. We are definitely completely losing. Don't get it twisted. But, I don't know. Maybe we can try something. Let's go Queen's E6. Oh, ah, oh, 
That was so stupid. That was so stupid. Oh. Okay. Um. <laughs> that I think I literally right. I think what I did wrong. Well, let me get the right thing up. Yeah, this works. I think what I did wrong was um just going c5 too early. I think everything else was fine. Like this is all theory. Um, I might not be playing it perfectly, but this is all okay. Takes takes. B5, bishop back. I expected the bishop to go here, to be honest. And black is a little bit better. A6 is unnecessary. I was considering um, B4, but after the knight goes here, I can't make C5 happen. Apparently, it's still fine. Bishop A6 is a nice move to stop white from castling. Because this bishop belongs on D3, not really B3. Um, A6 is okay, though. Castle, knight BD7. Knight in, and yeah, I needed to just go bishop b7. c5 was wrong, because I just missed that the knight could go there anyway. Um, yeah, bishop b7 was the move, for sure. And if white goes for a move like queen to f3 at this point, then I think, what, I just trade, put a knight on d5, and it's probably just dead equal. And white's pawn structure is a little bit worse than black, so I'd actually take black's position over white's here like if you get trades like this for example i would say yeah this favors black a little bit e5 is sort of weak we're both just going to challenge for the c file my bishop's kind of passive because all my pawns are on light squares but his bishop also can't really do anything about d5 and if he tries to break through d5 with e4 then he's just going to open my bishop up that's annoying that was an unnecessary loss because I just played c5 at the wrong time. I don't think I missed anything here. Uh, I don't think I could have done all that much. Apparently after knight b6, this is completely winning for white. I guess because there's too much pressure on the knight. And the bishop's going to end up there. Because let's say I do something like this. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, king g7, queen g4, and apparently I'm getting mate. Ah, I'm losing the queen. Very nice. Well, nice for white. Uh, yeah, we instead have this. Um, and I mean, I just don't really have anything. I was trying to potentially like make something happen here, but I just missed. That after knight takes, knight takes, the rook hung in the corner. I didn't really have anything better. And yeah, I was trying to trap the queen. Um, that's why I played knight c6, to block the queen's escape. And the bishop defends a6, and the knight protects a7 and b8. So the queen can't move, but I also have no good way of actually attacking the queen. So it was kind of desperation, and then I just blundered a stupid fork. With queen e6, the game was over already, to be honest. But um, yeah, let's hop into a second game to try and um, try and recover from that. That's very annoying. Okay, let's jump into another game. See if we can redeem ourselves here. Let's. I, I actually kind of want the black pieces, to be honest, because I like these c6 setups. But obviously, it didn't go well in the last game because. <laughs> I just did something really, really stupid. Okay, my opponent starts with knight f3. And we are going into a Karo. We have the two knights attack. d4 is playable, but I prefer to take. I assume you're going to take back. I don't know why he's thinking so long. After knight takes, bishop f5 is a move, knight f6 is a move, and knight 2d7 is a move. Knight d7 is my favourite. Queen e2 is a common trap to try and play knight b6 checkmate, but he doesn't go for it. So let's go knight gf6. The point is I could play this first, but I don't want him to take and me have to take back with a pawn, so I put I go knight d7 first. We're going to exchange. Going to go knight f6, bishop to g4, e6. Very comfortable position. It's going to give us the bishop. Wow. I could go bishop g4. I don't have to take him. If he wants to move back, then he can move back. I think I'm 
I'm going to give him the option. Go C3, so he still wants to give this up. I could, like, take, 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 and just trade. It's an option. I could just go E6 as well, which I'm going to do. Again, if he wants to drop his bishop back, I mean, go for it. Probably the best idea. Yeah, let's ask him the question. Now, obviously, can't take. All right. Now we have pressure on the knight on f3. If h3, I probably just drop back. And if g4 here, and if bishop takes, I don't have to take with the pawn and ruin my structure, but I can take with the queen. Although that does allow knight e5, which is annoying. So actually, I think I'm going to take it because I don't like the knight going to e5. That's, whoa. Okay, so it's opposite color bishops, which means that this position should favor whichever side is attacking. But I'm just going to castle queenside. Because the only point of doing this is to open the g-file for, for an attack on my king. But if my king isn't on the king side, I can just go g6, h5, and white has no real way through on the king side anymore. Because he doesn't have a g-pawn to break with g4, and he can't put a pawn on f5 because I have way too much control over that square. So, this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. I think black is definitely a bit better, even though it is opposite color bishops. I don't want to allow the move to d5 under any circumstance, so I'm going to break the pin on the pawn. I'll probably, I'll probably play a move like king b8. This bishop is nice, and it's difficult to kick out, because I don't want to play f5, because that will weaken g6 and e6. Okay, that isn't threatening anything. So I'm not too concerned. Not obvious how I get into the game, really, though. I'm going to go king b8 to put the king on a dark square. And although my structure is better than my opponent's, I don't know how I'm actually going to do much. Maybe e5? But then he can go for d5. Obviously, he's currently threatening bishop takes c6 with a pin on the uh, pawn. Could go rook d6, which I think I'm going to do. Because it's a dark square, I can double on the d file, maybe try and make e5 happen, maybe go bishop to b6 to make c5 happen. He might go a5 to try and get a6 in. He goes a5, I think I'll just play a6, and then claim that this is a permanent weakness. Rook j What? Oh, maybe I had this the whole time to just fork the pawns. Maybe. Let's go rook d8. Okay. I don't know why he's doubling on the g file. Oh, maybe he wants to go rook g5. To try and swing a rook over somewhere. Maybe that's the idea. I could go a5. But then the queen just goes to b3, and I've just created a weakness for myself. So, okay. e5 is definitely a move. Take, take, rook g5. Nah, don't love it. Mm, what should I do? What should I do? Could go queen h4 to target the pawn. Maybe I can glue the rook to a square like g3. I can maybe go to f4 to try and get into d2. And start targeting stuff. Maybe I should have gone there in the first place. Don't know. Yeah, let's go to f4. I'm going to try and move a bit quickly. I'm going to make like... This isn't a massive threat, right? But I'm just posing problem or potential problems for my opponent. Yeah, I think that is a bit of a mistake. Sorry, I had to go answer the door. Um, okay, the rook comes in. Maybe the rook wants to go to here. Is that a problem? 
don't think so. Uh, maybe rook h2 was better? I don't know. Sorry, queen h2. Uh, can he really sack? I don't think he can. F2 is under attack. My queen is in his position, which is nice. My bishop's kind of passive, but if my rook moves, there's ideas of this. Whoa, what does that do? I think I should just take the pawn and not think too hard. I don't see where his knockout is. I don't know where this rook's going. No way. No way that works. What is he doing? Oh my god! My queen. My queen. Oh no. Whoa, that that was a really nice move from my opponent. I may be able to hang on here, but I doubt it. I really doubt it. That was a very nice find. So frustrating. I'm gonna threaten this. Let's take Oh. oh I just blundered. Damn. Yeah, that's game over. That's game over. I don't have anything here. Oh my days. I felt like I played really well. Like, I, I must have stopped his attack. There's no way that when he um sacked his rook on c6, that that was actually... Okay, thank you, chess.com. Can I please analyze the game? I'll save you the trouble. I'll, I'll just pause it. I'll save you the trouble. Okay, there we go. It's actually worked. <laughs> so, okay, we had a Karo two knights. And you don't have to take on e4. Apparently e6 is a pretty good move. Knight f6 is decent, but after e5, knight e4 is the main move. And I personally don't like those positions. I prefer to go knight fd7, but in this case, it's not great because the bishop isn't out yet. So I like to take. Apparently e6 is pretty decent, which is more in the style of playing against the fantasy that I quite enjoy. But after like d4, if you take, then you're just very cramped. And if you don't, I don't know. You have to play like a winner type French position and it just looks kind of bad. So I like to take. And after knight takes, you can go bishop f5. It's probably the main line. Um, You can go knight f6 as well, which is what I used to play and get these positions. But I felt like I was always just fighting for a draw, which I know I'm the black pieces, but... Personally, I think the Karpov line with knight d7 is a bit more ambitious because after knight takes, you have knight takes and you're just fine. Something like bishop d3, bishop g4, castle e6, the position is just pretty nice. I don't know whether you can actually take this knight and then take the pawn. You probably can. Something like this, maybe bishop to e3 and yeah, black's just a bit better. So more realistically... In this position, something like c3 is going to be played. And then queen d5 is apparently a move to go after the knight. Queen d5, maybe you have to go bishop to e2. And then e6 or e5. Yeah, it's just a nice position for the um, black pieces. But bishop d3, I've seen a lot more commonly. And then just like trying to give me the bishop. And I don't understand it. I, like, I know in my head that it must be wrong, and it is. This is the best line, which I considered, but I was like, do I really want to trade everything like this? Is this actually beneficial for black? I guess I have the bishop pair, my pawn structure's good. Something like, I don't know, bishop f4, bishop f5, c3, e6. I guess this is nice. I, I probably should have gone for this, to be honest. 
Bishop g4 is what I chose, which isn't bad. c3, e6, bishop g5, I asked the bishop the question, and he takes. And after h3, I was like, I can't retreat, because if I retreat, g4, bishop g6, takes, takes, and knight e5. And I was like, this is an issue, because this knight is incredibly strong. And after something like, hmm... Let's say queen e4, bishop d6, f4, followed by something like queenside castle. I don't know. I thought this was kind of scary. Although queen h4 exists here. So maybe not in this exact position. Oh, there's also tactics on c6. Here, here, here. Queen e7, queen b7. Yeah. So I took, and he took back with the pawn, though. And I was like, this is not right. So... I just carried on developing. I castled the same side as my opponent so that he couldn't storm me on the king side. And I'm just better. This is just a better position. And I think I played this in quite a safe manner. I think queen h4 is on the cards in a lot of these positions. Although here, well, here you can take on c6. But let's say in this position, queen h4 with just a simple fork. Although you, oh, you can't do this because I'll take it. Yeah, so I probably should have seen that, to be honest. I just tunnel visioned a little bit. But rook d6, I just have a better position. e5 is actually playable. Oh, because it's just a pin after rook g2. There's a pin, so we can't even take. I should have seen that. Okay, but this is still good. And then, again, e5 is a good move, but I decide to try and infiltrate with my queen. Queen f4, unnecessary, but a6. The position is just far better for black, because... White has no way in. He, he doesn't have a way in. So I bring my queen in. Rook in. It doesn't do anything. I actually have rook d4. That's such a nice move. Because I'm pinning the pawn to the queen. Okay, that's kind of difficult to see in fairness. King c8. King h2. Again, I have rook takes d4 because of the pin. I instead take on f2. And the position is still good. White has no way in. Even after this, he takes rook in. I can just take on h3. King d7 is okay. d5. This is the blunder because it allows bishop f5 check. I should have taken with the c pawn. In my head, I was like, this opens stuff up on my king, but I guess it doesn't. Because if you try and give a check like this. I mean, I can go here and just give the bishop up and play some in, like, rook d7, and the bishop's actually pinned to the queen. Unless you go for bishop c2, but then I'll just end up in an exchange up endgame. But, um, yeah, I just missed. I missed the tactic. And here, I don't know, I tried something. I tried to kind of form a barrier around my king somehow. Apparently this is a draw, but in practice, with no time on the clock, White is always winning this because he has the queen and my king has no safety. So, uh, you know, I try and play on. That was a nice move. I missed this tactic. I needed to go bishop to e3. I just missed it. And uh, yeah, at this point, it's completely game over. I, I don't know. I played this move just in case he's some... For some reason, allowed the pawn to try and get in, but once he takes, I have nothing. So, yeah, ch chess is tough. Chess is really tough. Like, blitz chess, especially for me. My forte is definitely classical. Um, over uh, over the board, classical probably because I like the mental aspect of it as well. Like, there's a because it's in person and it's physical there's a bit more emotion and like looking across to your opponent rather than looking at a computer screen so i think i'm definitely better at that but i really want to hit 2100 blitz <laughs> i'm really gonna have to up my game if i'm gonna manage that so oh that's just chess